여기 대체 어디야? 집이지. 우리 새로 시작한다고 그랬잖아. 이게 그거야. 아빠는 비 가든 하나 만들 거야. Gentlemen, again, congratulations on the film. It is so incredible. And congratulations on the SAG nominations. And really, you guys are getting so much praise for it. But I have to ask you about how did you guys kind of reconcile the fact that such an American film was nominated for Best Foreign Language at the Golden Globes? I mean, I'm sure you're appreciative to be honored, but it seems so strange for such an American story. Yeah, you know, it. it's, it's weird because in the back of my mind, like um, when, when I think about language, when I talk to my mom and dad, we don't always connect using Korean or English. We, we just have gestures and, and facial expressions because we have this natural language barrier. Um, so I've always felt like there's, there should be no distinction of language, but that we're all really speaking human to each other, you know, even if we're not speaking English to each other. So, um, when this happened and there's this delineation with language, um, it it feels like a, like an external sort of category for me, which uh, I don't always understand. Um, and more, I just feel more sympathy to the people who really feel a lot of uh, offense to it and, and feel like, you know, once again, we're being treated as foreigners and all this stuff that I totally understand. But in my view, the characters in this film speak human and, and that's what they're doing to each other with their faces. You see it in Yeti, you see it in Steven and Alan. Um, and um, that, that's what I hope for this film that everybody will watch it and not think about language. They don't even know if they're reading subtitles because they get lost in the humanity of it. Well, I mean, if they're watching the film, I, I don't see how they can't. And I think that's bared out. I mean, this film still certified fresh critics, audiences. I'm so glad that more folks are going to get a chance to see it. But Alan, I'm going to have to ask you, um, as people start seeing it, you know, you're going to get to go to the SAGs now. Are you excited to maybe, you know, do your like Zoom party? Are you getting your suits ready for award season? Yes. <laughs> what did you think when you got nominated? Can you give me your reaction? <clears throat> I'm like, yay. <laughs> that was Perfect. the exact dance. Yeah, yeah. Was that the exact dance? <laughs> I love that. And I also love that this is a film, like you said, as, as folks get a chance to see it, it, it sort of continues, I think, a great trend that, you know, uh, director Bong talked about when he was doing the awards tour for Parasite is folks being able to sort of like hurdle the one inch barrier subtitles yeah. to open up an entire world of cinema. And Stephen, I just want to talk to you as far as like the Korean influence here. I mean, what you've worked with some of these filmmakers, what are you, which films or filmmakers are you hoping folks will discover thanks to what you guys have done here and, and films like Parasite? Oh man. Um, you know, I just hope, I, I, I don't know. I think there's so many wonderful talents um, kind of everywhere. Um, I see so many new uh, Chinese films being really beautiful. Um, Korean films, there's, um, I, I think House of Hummingbird is a really wonderful film. The World Between Us is a really wonderful film too. Yeah, I mean, I hope it just opens up a dialogue of understanding that like these, like director Bong said that these, these uh, subtitles are just literally tiny, tiny barriers of examining the humanity that all of us share. And so hopefully we're headed there. Yeah, I, I really love it. And I, I love the fact that, you know, we're able to cover these films and really get to talk about it because, yeah, it just opens up an, a whole different world of cinema and it seems like it'll never be ending because there's always different types mm -hmm. of stories to be told. Um, but Isaac, I have to talk to you about this one because this is an immigrant story. And one thing I remarked on it is it's one with very little racism throughout it, which I think was an incredible choice because so often immigrant tales are very much rooted in that. And I thought that was such an interesting choice to tell this story. And I wondered um, at what point did you make that decision or is that just how it played out? Um, it, I made that decision early on. Um, I, I'm glad that you you liked that choice uh, because for me, I that was kind of a gamble. Like I, I knew that people would be expecting a lot of racism, uh, to be honest. I thought uh, with a story like this, you often see that. Um, but first of all, that wasn't my experience growing up. Like I, I did encounter racism, but most of the time my existence was not defined by that racism and it wasn't defined by that uh, in my own family. Most of the time I'm just trying to relate to my family, to be honest. Um, and then my interactions with the community, uh, there's so many that just 
ended with love. Maybe it started with friction, but it really ends with uh, uh, people seeing each other for who they are. Um, so I wanted the film to function in that way. I didn't want it to um, just knee jerk say, well, these are white Southerners, so they're gonna be racist. Like, I think that in itself is, is, is problematic. Um, so yeah, I, 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 hope, uh, I, I hope that resonates somehow. I thought it was really incredible. And again, it really allows you to just focus in on the family and the dynamic. And one of the great dynamics, of course, is Stephen and Alan and the way you guys had to do that together. So I want to go back to the whole audition process, Alan, because I do know that you very much stood out. So do you remember that day when you were working with Stephen and, and you knew you were trying to audition for it at all? Yeah, I remember some of it. We, <laughs> we went into Plan B into a room. I went into a room below and met Stephen, the uh, and Julia Kim, the, the casting director. Yeah. 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 Casting director and Stephen taught me like uh, something called Dakte. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. oh good yeah. one. All right, Stephen, what's this real quick? So I want to hear all about it. <laughs> oh, it's like Korean pogs. <laughs> oh, nice. Like oh, that's dope. Made out <laughs> Oh, so do you like like bang them against each other? Yeah, you try to flip the other person's and you get to take it. Um, oh. But that's so keen that you remember that. I actually forgot about that. So do you have a better memory than I do? Was I scary though, Alan? Like when I came back into the room as your dad? Meh, not really. Dang. Alan's never scared. I never scared. Never seen him scared. I mean, no, and I. So great that Alan said um, was Isaac was like, hey, you know that like after we did the improv, he's like, you know that we're this was pretend, right? We were we we're, we're not we're done now. And then Alan was just like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, wait, no, in real life, I'm like, that was fake. <laughs> <laughs> Was that when you knew Isaac that he was the kid when he was just like, yeah, I got it. Was that the moment where you're like, all right, we're good. I mean, he, he convinced me, he fooled me. I thought, I thought, you know, he was really scared or something, but then it turns out, you know, he's just in the scene, he's acting. So uh, when you see that, you know that you're going to be all right on set. First of all, congratulations on the nominations. Um, it's been incredible, especially the SAG nominations. I'm just curious, what are you, and I'll start with you, Yuri, what are you thinking about the award season? Are you getting excited to, you know, come in and uh, sort of, I guess, meet the glitterati of Hollywood? <laughs> 일단은, 네, 일단은 되게, uh, 신기해요, 매일매일 이렇게. 기록을 갱신하듯이 좋은 소식을 미나리가 막 얘기해 주는 게 너무 신기하고 그리고 막 벌써 상을 50개가 넘게 받았더라고요. 그래서 어 이게 무슨 일이지? 라는 생각은 드는데 선댄스에 갔을 때처럼 사실 체감하는 느낌은 굉장히 적기는 해요. 이게 아무래도 멀다 보니까 더 그런 것 같아요. Enjoy it. It is. It's really incredible, and the, I think even more people are going to start to uh, appreciate it. But let's backtrack just a little bit. Um, Yu Jung, I'll start with you. This is one of the first big things I think a lot of Americans have seen you in. I, you know, spotted you in Sense Eight, but for other folks, this may be their first introduction. So I'm just curious. Um, what made you sign on to do this one? Because of the friends. <laughs> now, yeah, they, the... you know, when you get old, you can just focus uh, just one thing. Now, when you are young, well, you can just, uh, okay, this script, script will be good for me, good for my future or something like that. But now after six years old, I'm just focusing only people, the one I love, the one I, Mm, appreciate or uh, the, the one who is very precious to me that my precious friend introduced this script and then of course the script wasn't good maybe I would say no but uh, to, uh, <laughs> while I was reading it and then it, 
it, I felt very genuine and authentic. So I said, middle of the reading, I called her. Is it real story of him? And she said, yes. So I said, okay, I will do it. That's the start. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much because it came from a place from the heart and you can tell that when you see the performances because they're so touching and they're so moving. You can tell that everybody became a family on set and and Yuri, Monica especially, I find her your performance of her to be such a delicate thing because she keeps her emotions um, too close to her chest at the beginning and she slowly unravels them. So I wondered if you could talk about how you played that to give it a slow un, uh, reveal of how she felt. Well, <laughs> 왜 모니카는 제 곡과 함께 있는 걸까라는 생각을 가장 많이 했었어요. 그리고 어, 이 가족을 지킬 수 있는 방법은 뭘까라는 생각을 모니카를 연기하면서 가장 많이 했던 것 같아요. 그리고 아마 이 둘도 굉장히 많은 시간 대화를 했겠죠. 그리고 대화를 하는 시간들이 어, 대화가 안 되면서 음, 점점 대화가 줄었을 것 같다라는 생각이 들더라고요. 그래서 뭔가를 표현할 때 모니카는 이제 더 이상 말하기가 너무 싫었을 것 같아요. 그리고 아, 모니카의 침묵이 나름 제이콥에게 주는 벌이라고도 생각을 했었어요. 그래서 그 침묵을 잘 지키고 뭔가 모니카가 얘기를 할때좀더 어. 단호한 느낌도 있고 그리고 힘이 있었으면 좋겠다라는 생각이 많이 들었던 것 같아요. 그래서 가족을 지키겠다는 이 사랑과 힘이 강해서 좀더 뭔가 모니카가 그렇게 영화에서 그려지지 않았나라는 생각이 들어요. That's so beautiful. And yeah, that's that's exactly it. Because when you hit that climax, you especially feel it. I mean, it really hits home the whole emotion of the film. Um, before I get out of here, um, Yujung, I wanted to talk about Alan because I just got done interviewing him. And from the first time I met him at like Sundance to now, he is just effervescent and just like this ball of kid energy, which is infectious, but like a little hurricane. It's hard to contain. So talk about containing the hurricane to give that beautiful performance that you guys were able to do because it's i'm sure there's a lot of work on your side to make that happen as well sorry disappoint you i didn't work a lot with it <laughs> because it's all isaac's job because yeah. he, the director knows how to control him first i was scared to just meet him because i heard that he has not having experience. experienced the acting so i said Oh my goodness, what I'm going to do with this boy. And then, oh no, 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 no. He didn't, you know, he really made me disappointed. Uh, he <laughs> memorized all the line. And then I just asked him to do with me, just to, you know, to get over the line together. And then he was perfect memorizing the, all the line. And then after that, uh, Isaac uh, asked him to do this, okay. Uh, need some kind of shot, I think, from him. Just a smile, look at me and smile. And this kind of smile or that smile, and then look at the camera and then give you a brown face or something like that. It's all editing's job. It's Isaac's job. We got a stupid six or so. What to get to us? I checked this this morning. I didn't know until today. You're on a five certified fresh hot streak. Your last five films really? going back. Yeah, have all been certified fresh, which is quite a remarkable feat. And this is all, you know, post Walking Dead. And I think there must have been a lot of offers after that. And you could have gone a lot of different directions. But I think looking at the films you did, everything from Ocha and Mayhem and Sorry to Bother You and now Minari, Burning, that's a those are specific choices. So talk about how you made the choice to do those films or how you wanted to work with those filmmakers. Um, you know, I, it's strange because you're asking me now from a kind of a retrospective lens and, you know, maybe I've by this point kind of compiled like a story to tell about what happened and how I made these choices. But in those moments, like, 
I don't feel, I, didn't, I don't know if I had agency like that. I, I probably did. I certainly said no uh, to things that I felt like were just other versions of things that I've tried before. Um, but I think, I think, I think in a lot of it is, you know, for me, I'm just, I was really trying to find myself. I was really trying to find out who I was and um, kind of get to play in roles that allowed me the space to express the fullness of, of not me per se, but of a character. Um, you know, as, as an Asian American actor prior to Walking Dead, if I had any opportunity as, opportunities at all, it was really mostly to service larger narratives or kind of be kind, uh, like a, you know, like a plot point by which to weave the main character around. And so um, I wanted to be the main character that gets to have the plot points to weave around. And, you know, even with Mayhem, I'm so thankful to them for giving my, my first chance at like a leading role. Um, it wasn't a big budget and we shot it in Serbia, but we had some really wonderful people with us, you know, uh, Samara's incredible, uh, Joe was great. And, and, and just to kind of do that and flex that muscle was attractive to me. And then Okja, I think was, you know, who wouldn't work for Dr. Bong? You know, I'm a huge fan. And so, um, you know, him reaching out and, and giving that part to me was extraordinary and painful because K was, you know, very much something that I was at the time of just somebody straddling two worlds and being unable to service either one. And um, I think going through that experience, I wasn't necessarily super conscious of what I was participating in. I would, but like, I realized halfway through, I was like, oh man, like this is kind of how I feel. And um, it is a painful realization. And then Sorry to Bother You was really wonderful of just kind of speaking from an Asian American's perspective, even though it wasn't explicitly, but just in a different way of- um, You're Mr. Steal Your Girl in that movie. That's what I love. Like well, Cheese was the guy that was coming to slide into the DMs to check on it. I thought that was so brilliant. Uh, you know, that, that's Boots, you know, and and I guess on a larger note, what what I feel like is happening when you think about, you know, Yi Chang Dong and then you think of, and, and I, Isaac, um, I'm just really attracted to people that are singular people, you know, there's no other Boots Riley's, there are no other Yi Chang Dong's or Bong Jun Ho's or Isaac Chung's. It's really just these people that I gravitate towards that um, we can share an experience in a story that they've crafted that feels so unique. I remember reading Sorry to Bother You and like, certain people reading it and be like, what is this? And then me reading it be like, I gotta do this. Like I have yeah. to who can write like this? Who has a mind like this? And, um, and that, that, when I see that, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. <laughs> I love that you put it like that, because you're right. And I'm sure you're just going from job to job trying to do interesting work. But when you can look back on it, it really is incredible. And that was so cool. And I was like, getting ready for this to kind of chat about that one, too, because it the New York Times profile I read um, where you kind of talked about this and the identity and the choices that you made, I found it to be just so fascinating and interesting because the character that you play in Minari is just like not about multifaceted at all. He is just like a man on a mission, one focus, one goal, not listening to really any of the noise on the outside. And I think that's way more difficult, I think, than trying to play a multifaceted character in some ways to add that humanity. So talk about that balancing act. Yeah, Paul, uh, Jacob was Jacob was an interesting thing, person to, to, to kind of climb into the mind of, not because I didn't understand him at all, but because I think you're, you're kind of exploring the pain of being alone, um, the pain of isolation um, in him, at least for me. And I think that's where I found a lot of his humanity that uh, he means well and he wants things um, and he loves his family and he desperately wants to provide for them, but he doesn't know how to separate his role and his duty and his function from the love that he can also show his family. And oftentimes that function and duty takes the role of love that he shows for his family and his family doesn't know how to deal with that or accept that because maybe it's not really the best way to convey love, um, to just play your part. 
And in that way, I think, you know, Jacob from the outside looking in might look and feel like a patriarch that's dragging his family through his own ego. And ultimately it is to some degree, but from his perspective, he's also just trying his best to provide for his family and he's doing it in the only way he's ever known how, and that's to give his body and mind up to that struggle. And so um, I think in some ways he feels deeply alone and isolated from his own family because they can't see what he's providing for them or that's what he feels like they can't see. Um, so yeah, that was, a, that was kind of the journey of, of, of Jacob. And it's interesting too, obviously, because this is semi-autobiographical and I think even Isaac would be able to say that some of the stuff that he experienced was stranger than the fiction that he put on screen, but in the end you're playing his dad and, and that's another delicate dance too. So I was just wondering if you guys had any conversations with that. I'm sure he had to give you a bit of freedom with it a little bit, but also he wanted to make sure that it was true to, to the man that he was trying to be. Well, I'll, you know, to be quite honest, um, he actually left a lot of space. He left a lot of space. Um, he had no specifics on how his dad needed to be. And in fact, he never brought that up as, as something that he needed to be checked off. Um, he, you know, he, he wrote something so true in my opinion that was so human that I think it created space for a lot of people to have come in and taken that role and imbued it with the things that they knew. It just happened to be that, you know, Isaac and I share a lot of our experiences together of an immigrant life of isolation and of also understanding, you know, what it means to be a father. And so, yeah, I think that, I, I think that really speaks to on a larger note, the graciousness of someone like Isaac, you know, as I get to know him more and um, as I get to see how he thinks and how he's constructed this film and written this film, I peel back all those, layers and I realize what's at the beating heart of it all is just someone that like deeply, deeply cares about others and uh, about humanity in that way. And he cares not only about the characters that he's created, but also he cares deeply about even the audience, about um, making sure that there is no barrier to, to accessing these people in this story. And um, it's really about connection. I guess you'd have to be, yeah, because you wouldn't want to be stifled in that. It's, it's really incredible, too, because it feels so lived in. It's even more incredible to realize that it was just a creation that you guys were able to do from taking it to the from the page to the screen. Um, I guess I have to definitely ask you about this one and the fact that um, folks are now going to finally get to see it. And the scene, I guess it were, that you end up with Yuri towards the end is probably one of the most climactic things. but. Without spoiling it, it, just talk about her as a scene partner and how you guys were able to work that out because in a lot of ways, the movie lives or dies by that scene. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm so glad you, you enjoyed that. I, you know, um, I can't say enough good things about Yeti. Um, she's incredible. She, her role in this is so, so it, it's so meta too, you know. Um, that particular scene, um, I guess I got to start from how we shot the whole thing. You know, we never really over talked much. Um, we maybe talked about that particular scene a lot in terms of um, shaping what I wanted to say in that moment and maybe what she wanted to say in that moment. And we got to some place that felt right for the two of us. Um, but beyond that, you know, there was many times where her and I really just had single takes. Um, we kind of really lived an experience and um, the ways in which she was honest about her approach to Monica and the ways that I would talk about my approach to Jacob and kind of the, the truthfulness that we shared between each other. Um, and even in the disagreements of how we saw situations were part of it, you know, it was part of making the tension of those characters. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I knew I could just trust her intrinsically to be honest and truthful all the time. And, you know, if you have a scene partner like that, like that's, you're chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it didn't look like y'all were chilling. It looked pretty powerful, but I get what you're saying as far as the work mm -hmm. on the other side. Um, last one, and this one's a little bit light, but I just got to put it out there. Uh, your character, Jacob, is like the Michael Jordan of chicken sexting. <laughs> 
we we are very curious if you got good at this and trust me when i say this was a very big editorial conversation at rotten tomatoes so please take this seriously we want sure. to know did you get good at telling the difference between male and female i did i got pretty decent <laughs> you know actually who probably got better is yeti yeti really? was, yeti's the real I'm, I'm probably like i'm probably like the scotty pippen no maybe 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 i'll get all the credit because some dumb dumb weirdness but um she's the real mvp you know <laughs> this body's a real mvp she's she, she really she really knew how to do that i think for us it was the practice of of practicing that with our animal wrangler and also you know my wife her parents also chicken sexed just like isaac's parents um and they taught us tips and tricks and we all grew out our thumbnails so that we could like open their vents uh it was it was a it was a fascinating time Oh my gosh, I really did not expect that to be such a thing. So I will have to, I literally was like, he's not going to say anything about this chicken sex stuff. Y'all are morbid, but you know what? I'm, I'm down with that one now. Um, and then just like a very last question again, just to follow up on the parasite. Now you guys entering in this conversation, logical best picture nominee, folks in my seat who do this for a living are already talking about that thing. Man, what do you think is going to be like this next section when we get back into theaters? Do you think it's just going to push even further? And if so, what are you excited to see next? What kind of stuff would you like to see American audiences come sort of import over? I don't know. I mean, I think we're also I think for America, what's fascinating about especially this film is kind of really digging into what's already been here. You know, and I think that's kind of touching on what we are facing with Minari in terms of I think this conversation around foreign language and 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 even Parasite, you know, Parasite um, opened many doors and broke down a lot of barriers on a larger, I think, humanity level of just understanding each other between cultures. Um, but their humanity that they're expressing is unencumbered by the American gaze because they're Korean people and they're making it from Korea, so they're not considering us. Um, whereas our film does have to navigate the constant consideration of who we are in the midst of a primarily white majority American audience. And so um, a lot of the time, the ways that that would express is we end up explaining ourselves or we end up um, uh, it, it telling the audience how we are oppressed by the majority or how the majority factors into our story. But the truth is, is we weren't even considering them <laughs> because that's our story. Our story doesn't bring home a consideration of the majority American whiteness at a constant level. It's just like, I'm me and I am, I exist. And this is from my point of view. And I think it was really cool to be at a time where an American company in Plan B and A24 can finance and produce and make a, 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 a language, a, a non-English language American film. I mean, what a new foundation, what a new frontier. And um, I hope that, you know, if anything comes about, it's that we get to really understand what makes America um, more. Um, all the things that have always been here, which is the just all of us. There's so many different things that make America. And um, I'm interested in that as the next step for us on the American side. And then beyond that, the world is just getting more and more global anyhow. And so, you know, hopefully we get to be human together at some point. <laughs>